Okay, my friends, today it appears that most of my followers prefer videos about extreme people and extreme things. So, with that said, cover the barbarians. Barbarian brothers, David and Peter Paul. And these guys certainly epitomized extremes in a lot of ways. Uh, this first article is from uh, Ron Fernando. I'm not even sure what magazine it's out of because it was from uh, the... the uh, did a low blog, but he talks about people doing crazy things. A couple football players he mentioned. Another one he didn't mention was Lyle Alzado, which we covered in a previous video, but he was pretty wild. And there's a story actually about him and the Barbarians that I heard from uh, my friend uh, Joe DeMarco that uh, supposedly the Barbarian brothers owed him some money. Somehow he lent him some money. And uh, theoretically, according to the rumor... He beat both of them up at pretty much at the same time. It's pretty hard to believe. That's a story I heard and it, from a pretty reliable guy. Now, these guys did crazy lifts. They got in a lot of bodybuilding magazines, a uh, cover of a powerlifting magazine, which we're going to see here coming up. Um, and again, sorry if some of these uh, text boxes go by a little fast, but again, you can always pause them where you need to there's the powerlifting uh cover i was talking about that's 82 the the article from ron fernando it says right on the front was from 81 and then we're going to do a muscle and fitness article that was also from 81 and i'm gonna eh, not use every word from the article because it's a really long article so i tried to kind of summarize the last uh probably six or eight pages into just a few. Uh, they like to uh, claim that they were going to break records, and they probably did, you know, depending on uh, how you look at the records. and But you have to question, you know, where these weights weighed and stuff like that, where that's what they would do at, at Guinness Book events and things like that. I mean, was it obvious that they were throwing around some huge weights? Obviously. Uh there's Peter. Um, so I was talking about here where they're, you know, going to break records at this show. And um, he was going to break uh, Terry Todd's reverse bench press of 500. I mean, somebody yells out, oh, it's only 495. And he's like, close it up. They were uh, also jokers and comedians. That's part of why I titled it the way I did. Um perhaps a little offensive towards these guys but uh you know we'll see we'll see where where we're at with all that stuff here they are you know here he is squatting obviously uh around 500 pounds or more and you know looks like they're getting down pretty deep um here's one of the funny things he's talking about that he thinks that uh if he was the mayor of santa, santa monica uh he wouldn't let anybody permission to the beach that had less than a 60-inch chest and 20-inch arms like he did, which obviously is ridiculous, but it's funny. They, you know, they're always about the hype and the, and the being funny with the hype. This gentleman is uh, Daggett, who we'll talk about in the next. Roger Daggett, who's a, uh, a Canadian guy, and he was well-known for doing uh, big behind-the-neck presses of like 400 pounds, so he responded to David's challenge. And David just said, okay, but first I'm going to uh, have him try to match my neck work with, like, 275. He'll break his neck, and the contest will be over. Well, I see no record of that contest ever taking place, uh, like a lot of things these guys talk about. And honestly, everything they say, uh, I kind of take with a grain of salt. Uh, there they are, again, with the behind-the-neck press, which they did do, you know, he's... Uh, some serious weight, and uh, they did a lot of stuff for, for higher reps, even with heavy weight. But and they did say that because of their small hip structures, and uh, they wouldn't be able to do uh, such massive weights in powerlifting relative to their other lifts. And they had smaller legs. They did concentrate a lot on their upper bodies, which when you're doing, uh, you know, barbarian-type films... And that's what you're being portrayed as. 
they're not looking at your legs all that much. Um, so this is just the end of that first article by Mr. Fernando, and we're going to roll into the muscle and fitness article here, which is covered by Rick Wayne, who is a pretty good bodybuilder himself and an interesting writer. Um, so you have uh, Peter and Paul. Peter was just a little bit smaller and uh, perhaps a little bit weaker on some of the things, but he, he had his strengths too. So here uh, Mr. Wayne is talking about the first time he laid eyes on Peter Paul, and uh, this was um, at Gold's Gym, and he goes on for a really long time about the differences between the old Gold's Gym and the new Gold's Gym and all these different things. Um talks about going in there to do a workout on this new machine and and I think it was Peter told him watch out that thing's wicked so he took his advice after uh, the thing almost killed him and went on to a normal it was a rowing machine but it was uh, a really unusual one apparently uh, so anyway he moves on to more old fashioned barbell rows now one of the things that I think other bodybuilders dislike these guys about was what you just saw right there. They're doing, you know, the brothers jumping on a stack of weights on a tricep machine. I wouldn't be thrilled about that if I was the gym owner and probably not if I was another guy in the gym. Uh, so here's, uh, it's funny because they were carrying around a script to this barbarian movie, which you may have not seen or maybe you did, but the, the trailer came out in 87. This article is from 81. so And they're carrying around the script to it. So that's how long it took them to get this script, you know, actually into a film made. Um, and they definitely, you know, had that look. And it, like they will talk about, they don't even know, like, where that barbarian moniker came from. But they figured, yeah, that works. You know, we'll, we'll roll with it. So. So that's what they called themselves, although they had called themselves other things in the past. It's kind of weird names, really. Um, but So Ricky's talking about just the craziness where they were in a mall, and he said, was that? They were running amok in a mall, and it, somebody was trying to climb walls and stuff like this. They were known for, you know, just being outrageous in a lot of ways. Um, so here he is talking about the script. It's about our life and all this stuff. Uh, and then, so he was trying to arrange an interview with these guys, and he goes on for like four or five pages. There they are in their crazy gear. We'll talk about why they wore that heavy stuff. Now, this book I've never seen uh, or heard of, I and mean, it's interesting because uh, they really didn't have a set routine, and I'll tell you that straight up. When they went in the gym, they trained strictly instinctively. They just did what they felt like doing and and uh, kind of went crazy, which was another reason why other bodybuilders, you know, didn't like them too much. Um, and really, you know, I said at the end, were they Hollywood wannabes? I think that's the whole thing. I think they were really... And he talks about admiring uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Um, you know, his whole business thing, where, and, you know, the, he was doing the, the Conan movies. So, but you got to remember, Arnold didn't just think he, he had the rights to be a movie star because he was a big bodybuilder. Arnold took acting lessons. He took voice lessons. He worked hard at it. And he still never became a tremendous actor, but he was good enough, and he had that certain thing that, you know, he made some blockbuster movies. These guys... A, were not great actors. Uh, that This movie that came out in uh, 88, trailer came out in 87, the, they got horrible reviews. And, they, you know, they, they did other bit parts, probably doing more of this kind of, you know, sword and sorcery kind of stuff. Yeah, they look great, especially upper bodies. They're massive. But you can see they're not cut. Um, and that was, a you know, I saw one video where they were saying they had no, asp later, they said they had no aspirations to be bodybuilders. Here, David's talking about almost getting the blows with Ken Waller about their outfits. 
because they wore this crazy lumberjack stuff and and probably about some of these antics they were doing in the gym, like the brother getting on the tricep machine. This is probably, you know, they're at a movie set, that picture there. Uh, but they also talked about uh, how, you know, most of the bo- modern bodybuilders of that year were immoral and all they cared about was winning contests and they didn't care about their families and they were taking drugs because they couldn't get to where they wanted to get to with their genetics like these guys claim they were doing. Well, color me skeptical. You guys really claim that you're not taking any kind of steroids? Mm, I can't prove anything, but color me skeptical. Um, and then they were talking about if it's so great to be cut, uh, then how come little skinny guys never beat like Arnold or, or Sergio? Well, I might point you to Frank Zane, who I wouldn't call skinny, but he's not that big. You know, what was he 200 pounds ripped on stage or not even? Unfortunately, David passed away in 2020 with heart problems. And um, then after that, Peter kind of faded into the black back. But um, they did do another film, which I showed a picture of. It was called Twin Sitters in 94. And then um, they did one together in 2013 that was pretty much a nothing burger. But um, that's about it, folks. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll stay tuned. And subscribe if you haven't, and I'm out.